Hey, hello, hello. I think I'm live. Uh, I've just covered up where the live bit is. Yeah, I'm live. Hey, guys. Hey, Alan. Hey, Chris. What, you've no customers at the moment? Um, <laughs> don't care if we'll get anybody in. Oh, I've got one viewer. Ooh. I just had impromptu live at the bench. Hope you're doing well, Lunt. Lunchtime, I take it. Are you off? Or oh, breakfast? Breakfast time in America already. Bloody hell. No, it's not an exciting day. I'm still I'm still standing. I thought I'd do a wee live stream. E. Oh, things popping up my screen. Things popping up my screen. So is everyone. Aye. <clears throat> I'll just have a wee slurp of coffee. Uh, not a fox cup of coffee, just a, a yeah, he kind of slurps, doesn't he? Mmm. Nice wee coffee in the afternoon. Yeah, so I'm not going to be doing much today. I'm carrying on where I left off the last time. Just thought it would get me to the bench. Uh, I'm just going to be wet sanding the bane of my life with shiny. Lynn's going, did you post this in the dungeon? Uh, no. <clears throat> I just posted it up on Smooth Watch Up, my Patreon, and... Just watch up Patreon. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I'm not going to put them up in the dungeon. Because they're kind of last minute. Most of the folk in the dungeon are on my page anyway. So hi, everybody that's joining in. Uh, if you're joining in via Patreon, like, by the way, uh, go down to the bottom right-hand corner, hit the little YouTube icon, and that's a company YouTube page, and you can interact in the chat. I'm not planning times for any of these, because it's like, my sleeping partner's usually all over the place, so I'm only going to be on for a couple of hours. And uh, it's just trying to get me to the bench. And if I'm just sitting myself, no speaking to anybody, I, I tend not to get anything done. So I just thought, might as well stream it while I'm on. Uh, get myself some Mike and Mage. What am I wanting this time? What? Something a bit finer than six. Let's get some eight. Eight and a bit of twelve. So the darker one's at eight. So, yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, folk will be going, oh, what's he doing on a Friday? A lot of folk will still be at work, but, you know, quite a nice day outside, actually. Um, I was going to go in about an hour earlier, but... Uh, they're digging up the roads outside. Right, so the dark one's the eight. Remind me, that's the eight. Right, the dark one. And the light one's the 12. I wish I'd just keep them all the same colour. Uh, specific colours, but it depends on which batch you get. I've got 1,202 different colours here. Right, so eight's the dark one and 12's the light one. Oh, you've got a biscuit. I bet, I bet you've not got one of these, though, have you? Oh, oh, oh these are Moorish. Oh, mm. I finished my hobnobs. So, yeah, I do I do like me noms. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking for my towel, actually. Uh, that's back where I left it, just to make sure I've got my, my towel for dry my head. Yeah, so if you're, if you're new on the channel and wondering what's going on, Oh, you, Lynn's got a glass of milk. Ooh. Um, if you're new to the channel, you've just happened by. Basically, um, this is just me modelling at the bench. It's nothing exciting today. I'm going to be uh, wet sanding the, the body, the, the lacquer coat on this uh, little PW bug that I'm doing. Um, so nothing exciting. Um, but it's just uh, a chance for uh, to chat to people while I'm at the bench if anybody comes in. Obviously, Lynn and Chris is in, and they've got their spanners on. Yeah, spanners. Oh, coffee. You can't do anything without coffee, can you? Mm. Ah. Yeah, lovely. Right, so I suppose I better do something then, eh? Get a bit of work done. Because once I get this all polished up, I can start detailing all the dash in that inside. Uh, interior roof and all that, and then it's getting the windows in, which I've heard a bit of uh, 
a bit of fun. So yeah, I'd started doing the roof, but the reason I'm doing this is I've actually got quite a good coat of uh, lacquer on it. It's got very, 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 very fine uh, orange peel on it. Um, I'm going to get bumps with these. It's maybe white now a bit. See if I can zoom in, actually. Let's see if I can zoom in. If I can hold it steady enough over here so you can actually see these daft wee stickers I've got. I've got wee smiley faces on them. Now, these are nail decals, uh, the little sunflowers. Don't know if you can quite make that out. Hey, I'm art scale models. So, yeah, uh, uh, they're actually it's just they're actually nail decals, so they're a lot thinner than um, what you would normally have as a, a decal. So, they are going to be slightly raised anyway, I know that. Um, but if I can get rid of the orange peel, uh, although it's not bad, uh, and get it all nice and shiny. So this is a quite a boring and laborious part. So how you doing, Mark? You finish work early with being a Friday, or what are you up to? I know Lynn's having her breakfast, and uh, Chris is skiving. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that's a wee bit of that. I was showing somebody in the last one how I decant my paint. And there's a wee fleck of um, paint come off the end of that old pipette I was using. So yeah, I didn't actually think it was going to go live at first. Um, YouTube's putting up a lot of internal server errors at the moment. And um, when you try and go into the uh, the live hangouts and stuff. So uh, it might be something to watch for when you're setting up for... Uh, Sunday and Monday for Fox anyway. Um, do it in plenty of time. Um, <clears throat> it lets you into the Creator Studio page. But it, uh, as soon as you click on the live streaming, it comes up internal server error and a load of gobbledygook. If you keep at it, you'll get it to go through. Um, but yeah, so I thought you weren't going to get um, live. Now, what's happened here? What's... Ooh. That's all right. It was, yeah. Uh, it will white out a little bit, this, because it's like bright yellow and all that. So, who else is on? Thanks, you tubs. You're just at the bench messing around. What are you messing around with, Mark? Not like messing around on a Friday afternoon. I mean, I mess about most of the time anyway, so it doesn't matter whether it's a Friday afternoon or not, eh? Yeah, and so <clears throat> just trying these out because uh, I'm severely lacking mojo to get to the bench. And if there's people sitting there watching, it's going to make me do stuff. So I thought it was a good idea. But I understand a lot of the, the peeps, especially in the UK, will still be at work. Well, Chris pretends he's at work. Like, but, uh, everybody hear me okay, yeah? Not that I'm got anything exciting to say. Although, uh, I noted um, Chandra posted up earlier on that she's been having earthquakes. Now, I've been following a guy on the YouTubes uh, for that sort of earthquake in Hawaii volcano discussion the other day there. And he monitors earthquakes all the time. It's quite interesting. There's earthquakes every day all around the world and it's all around all the plates that move about. And... Uh, yeah, so he's predicting another big one. So Mike's doing decals on the seven class. He's not even finished that yet. Bloody hell. Vampin RC, <clears throat> how you doing? Greetings, Terry. Anyone else from South Africa? Now, oh, have you had South Africa? I'm trying to remember this quick thing that I've been watching because I've been watching a Hawaii volcano live. Um, and there's quakes all down there. East Coast of Africa as well, but it's, it's just all the plates moving, but I didn't realise that they were happening all the time. You only hear about the big ones. So I've been finding that. It's my new, my new interest. So people at the bench, that's good. So Mark's working up to starting the Hobby Boss 172 Leopold Railgun. That's not going to be as big as a door on me, is it? It's just a, like a tank turret on a... What do you call it? Tank turret on a rail carriage. Something like that. 
Bump uh, going, yeah. Oh, Chris is pretending he's at work, so he keeps having to go away. Yeah, he has to go to the toilet. See, see work would be all right if it wasn't for customers. Um, you always find that. Yeah. You know, you're just sitting down to your coffee and your digestive biscuit and a bloody customer comes into the shop. You know, it's like, oh, come on, hurry up and buy your stuff and bugger off. <laughs> so, yeah. What's vamping saying? <clears throat> Take it, the RC stands for radio control, maybe. Just got it back into 124th modeling after three years doing a Tammy and this and GTR R34. Ooh, nice. I think I've worked on the real car, actually, uh, when I was on this in tech. Uh, Lynn, uh, if you want your watch fixed by a pro, then come over to Chris. Um, but, yeah, you can use that as an excuse. <laughs> but, yeah, Chris, if you let folks know about the problems that YouTube's having, so if he's going to be setting up for Sunday or Monday, to do it in plenty of time. Because once you've got the live feed up, you just uh, keep the page up. Don't go off the page in your creator studio because the chances are if you go off the page you'll get an internal uh, server er error uh, server error yeah get your teeth into it um and you'll not get back on it and your stream will not go live so just something to be wary of so that's no bad so we've got south africa and where did vampin say he was from Oh, I've been South Africa. Mark's in the UK, I think. Mark's skill models. Yeah, so I, did, I, <clears throat> I was thinking about doing one of these in the evening, but I'm obviously not going to do it on a Friday evening because it's the ISM live show on a Friday, and it's, there's probably absolutely no point to me streaming live for the bench when there's a big show on. Yeah, like that would be an expensive watch repair. It's not that, it's, you know... Chris is down in London, mate, you know, so um, property prices and all that down there, you know, he charges about a gazillion pounds an hour, so, you know. You're on the Wirral, man, on the Wirral. Oh, you're not far away from Mr. Mountain. Down that way, where all the scallies are. So you've not been out, you know, taking wheels off any vehicles today then, Mark? Because I thought that was like a, a hobby of the people down there. You know, they were really... I actually heard that uh, <clears throat> you had to drive above 30 mile an hour because I had teams of motorcycles that would actually jack up the car and take your wheels off while you're still driving. They've got it down to such a fine art. I could be wrong. I could just be maybe making something up like... Yeah, Chris is down the landing. Cold, blimey tumblers. Ettles and pears. Yeah, so anybody that does shiny, this is the the most laborious part of it all. Vamping. Do you do you use lacquers? Do you do all the the shiny back, or do you do the two K treatment? You're having a rest today, Mark. Yeah, I have a rest every day. Yeah, that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. That's just coming up really nice, actually. For a fun little Airfix build. So, are you working this weekend, Lynn? Or are you. What are you up to? I know she's having milk and stuff for breakfast, but. Watch this, I'll, I'll get this all nice and shiny and smooth and I'll bugger it up when I glue the door handles on. Has to be done though, has to be done. Let's get a, all the, it's very, very fine orange peel actually, it's not bad. Um, but uh, yeah, I get a bit anal about stuff like that. So. Well, one used to fly RC airplanes. <laughs> Oh, God, I bet everybody stayed indoors when you were doing that, Lynn. I can just imagine you. <laughs> Heidi, oh, shit, I've just chopped your head off my wing. Uh, now you've got a drone that you're learning. <laughs> oh, you're off for three days. Oh, that's cool. 
learn flying a drone. Uh, I better watch it. She'll, be peek, she'll fly it all the way across the, the big the big water and she'll be trying to peek into my room to see what I'm up to. Right, I'll need to be careful there where I send because there's a high spot. Yeah, flying RC airplanes. See, I like the helicopters, but I mean, I've been watching all the YouTube fails of people. Um, I mean, some of these helicopter kits and that are really expensive. And then you, you have a bit of a mishap when you're learning and there goes a £300 kit out the window. I suppose you learn with, with something cheaper, right enough. <coughs> One ten scale drifting using three racing Sukas, AWD and RWD D4. I don't know much about the drifting. I know it's different tyres. Um, my friend used to do remote control um, racing. Uh, what size was his cars? Were they... I think they're about 112 scale. Um, they had a little engine in them. They ran on nitro. Uh, it was like foam tyres, and it was just an oval track. But these things would get up to about 80, 90 mile an hour. And it's like, wow. How do you control the blooming things? But yeah. But the drifting ones is like a hard neoprene tyre, isn't it? So you can get the, the back end out. Yeah, I've, I've heard about the boys that do the drifting. You've got to be quite dexterous on your old controls, haven't you? Hard plastic tyres, yeah, I knew I knew they were different because uh, I know the, my mate, when he was doing the, the RC cars on the oval, they were almost like a foam. And obviously, they would burn out if you're on a drifty car. So I take it they're just slightly stronger motors. Um, torqueier motors. Is it is it nitro ones that you're using or is it ele electric for the drifting? <laughs> That would be quite a fun thing to do over an afternoon, drifting little scale cars around about the place. So hi to anybody else that's popped in. Um, I've only really put the link up on my uh, Smooth Watch Up page and on my Patreon. So if you're coming in or you're viewing on a mobile device, click the little YouTube icon in the bottom right. Come to the main page and you can chat away. I've got my sticker all wet. <laughs> Said that just to the bishop. Oh, brushless electric. Ah, you'll, so you'll have instant torque then. So, yeah, there'll be some big, big ass batteries in those if you're going to be drifting all the time. <coughs> but they've all got polycarbonate shells on them, eh? So if you're painting them, you've got to paint them for the inside, haven't you? I've actually got a, a, a wee group uh, vamping. It's on Facebook. Um, it's Facebook forward slash groups forward slash Smooth Dungeon. Uh, you're welcome to join in there and, and post up your pics and share them with the rest of the rest of the peeps. Because I suppose radio control cars is a form of modelling, isn't it? It's an expensive bloody form of modelling. Um, I was in at Wonderland Models in Edinburgh and had some of these uh, big remote control trucks and you're like £300 for the, yeah, what's this one? I want to get RC truck to drive around the yard. Oh, some of them are absolutely gorgeous. They're real expensive, but expensive. This little A panel is going to be a bit of a pain, but luckily it's not too bad. Because there's a high point on one side and a high point at the top and I don't want to sand right through. <laughs> I could just get the worst of it off and get it with polishing compound. Yeah, South Africa. So I'm just trying to think, because it's that way around, it's probably, well, it's just coming up for 4 p.m. here. Is it about 6 p.m. in South Africa? 6 or 7 p.m.? Must be about that. Because I know Europe is an hour ahead of us. And where Lynn is, you're probably, is it eight hours behind Lynn? I'm just trying to think if this is four. It'll be about eight o'clock in the morning for you, Adlan, is it? So you're four fifty-one. Oh, so you're pretty much European time then. Bumping. Oh yeah. <laughs> well bloody hell, that is an expensive hobby. Yeah. You spent two thousand two hundred? Is it two hundred? 
pound and a South African. Three thousand a South African on a drift car instead of an RC truck. Yeah. Oh, so you're nearly nine a.m. then. Uh, well, some some models are expensive, but I mean, yeah, perfect grade Falcon, Lynn. I just get that in there that you've got a perfect grade Falcon. You know, it's just like I've got a perfect grade Falcon. You didn't get one. Yeah, that'll be a good build for you, Lynn. Because I think you've got the lights and all that for it as well, eh? Exchange rate, aye. Uh, I thought where you were, it was the exchange rate was sort of, I, I, I'll give you this and uh, you give me some carrots and that, you know, I'll, I'll give you the spare wheel off my car and I'll give you some vegetables. But they passed that now, are they? Here's me with my stereotypical uh, wind everybody up stuff. Big place, South Africa, never been. Got any interest in wildlife down there vamping that you have to watch out for because uh, some of the Australian viewers that come in, it's like everything that uh, moves in Australia wants to bite you, eat you, or kill you. Have you got any much interesting wildlife in your neck of the woods? Or is it just the locals? Yeah. I've not, I've not watched the news for a while. There was a lot of trouble in Africa for a while, but I think that was more in the north, wasn't it? Try to figure out how much everything is. Well, £200 is 3000 South African money. Wow. So when you get a week's wage, you're getting like 3000 a week. Vampin's got a great white shirt. <clears throat> He's on the coast then. I'm just going for a little swim. Oh, look, there's a little shark that wants to say hello. Mm. <laughs> that would be a bum clenchy moment, I think. Well, you've got the reserves there. Brilliant. Blinds and cheetahs, yeah. Don't play Scrabble with cheetahs because they cheat. Aye. Oh, that's cool. I think lions are gorgeous. I think my favourite's tigers, though. Oh, you're a bit more inland for the coast. Yeah. Oh, so you're at few... Bleh, teeth in. You're near a few game reserves then. That's quite cool. Well, there's a boy racer out on his wee 125 motorbike. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, giving it the bleh, bleh, bleh. It's like, yeah. I hope he's got his helmet on today because I've seen a guy riding along on his bike the other day with another youth on the back. And neither of them had helmets on, and it's like, oh, don't fall off, please. South Africa has great white sharks. I think you'll find it's mostly the sea it has them. Yeah, I've, I've not seen... <laughs> I'm not, obviously, off the coastline, I'm just taking a mickey. Oh, my coffee's going to get cold. I better have a slurp. So what have all you guys got planned for the weekend then? Is there any exciting nightlife across there? I actually need someone can help me import some paints. Ah, see, that's a big problem nowadays. Um, there's a lot of restrictions on importing certain chemicals and stuff, and it can get quite expensive. Um, what sort of paints is it, Vampin? Because... Um, I do know that eModels export, they would know whether you're on the list of being able to get the stuff or not. <clears throat> um, because I know there's certain countries that you can't ship to, and America's a nightmare to ship stuff out to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Yeah, I think America's more electronics, but just anywhere now, if it's anything with chemicals in it, you know. Could we, uh, what was it we used to struggle to get? We used to struggle to get Tammy extra thin. Right, zero paints. 
have you actually contacted uh, Steve Hemming at Zero Paints to see if he'll ship across there? Um, because obviously, if he's able to ship there, you're, you're going to be cheaper getting them direct from Steve Hemming at Zero Paints at himself at um, Hero Boy. Hey, Ali. Hello, not been on for a while. Uh, yeah, Vampin. Um, <clears throat> if you go to heroboy.com, uh, it's run by a, a guy down south uh, called Steve Hemming. Um, and he's a, a zero paints um, supplier. Um, and they also, they also custom mix stuff as well. Um, so give Hero Boy a shout. Uh, and if he's able to ship to South Africa, then. But certainly, as a supplier in the, that's only a supplier in the UK, I know it does a zero paints. Um, so the guy you want is Steve Hemming, it's his own business. Um, and he's a, a zero paint stockist, so try him. Um, he'll be able to tell you if he can uh, if he can ship to South Africa or not. I do know there's restrictions, so it might just be. I think it's specialist couriers. You've got to mark on the box that it's all flammables and. <coughs> Oh, lens, lens into the checking out. I just know that certain couriers are like Royal Mail and that. Of like, ooh, coffee, coffee. Yeah, I mean, zero paints aren't bad. I mean, you're, you're usually about seven pounds for a pot, but yeah, what well, if you think that if some, the time you put the shipping on and you're only wanting a few paints, you've really got to wait till you've got all the ones that you want. Uh, uh, your local suppliers will get them in on a pallet load and uh, yeah I mean I don't know what you're paying for a, a bottle of zero paints but I got a, a 60 mil bottle uh, the cat yellow uh, from a Peterbilt and it was only about 6 or 6, 7 pound which is not bad for 60 mils um, obviously plus my shipping but I'm only talking a couple of quid hey Gary how you doing mate Gary Parsley's in Good afternoon, everyone. Not doing anything exciting here, Gary. I'm just, I thought it would get me to the bench. I've been lacking getting to the bench of late. 80 South Africans, so 3,000 is 200. 1,000 is 100. <laughs> uh, so 100 is 10. Actually, that's not bad, mate. If 100 South African is 10, Pound and you're you're eighty South African. You're probably a, ah, you're probably about eight quid mark. It's probably about right actually, mate. That's about the prices of these. About five quid. That's about the prices they paints go for, mate. Hello, JS Idaho. Hello, Terry, and a great Friday, everyone. Welcome in. Nice to see you in, mate. As I say, I'm just. Uh, Farting about at the beach. I'll probably only just be on till about the back of five because I don't want to be on too long. And of course, um, later on in the Friday, it's ISM and all that. So, well, quite busy in here actually for a Friday. Mind you, we've got American because yes, Idaho's in America. The clue's in the name, I've been told. It's Idaho. Uh, Vampins in South Africa. And all the rest of them are in the UK, as far as I can tell. Oh, get me coffee done. Well, Volkswagen kit is up. <clears throat> See, Airfix starter kit, mate. Uh, it's one thirty second scale uh, Airfix starter kit that uh, I started for the group build many moons ago, and yeah. That's all right. It's, it's actually a nice wee tub. I've been told the windows are a bit shit. So, yeah. Uh, Lynn's got the same one to build. What are you doing, Lynn? You're doing your laundry. What an exciting life you've got, eh? You'll stick around to the end, my love. <laughs> As I say, I, I thought I'll come on for a couple of hours. I'll maybe get some more uh, wet sand and done and that. And uh, I did my bike yesterday, so it's ready for its next lacquer coat. Um, mm, that was a nice cup of coffee and my water sitting there. So my bike's ready for its next lacquer coat. As I said, it's final lacquer coat, and I'm just 
yeah, just try to get rid of it. A little bit of the. There's no, it's not bad actually. I don't know if you can. I'll see if I can zoom in on it. With the power of the, the zoomy camera, let's see if we can see how the shine is on this. Because if I bring it too close to the light, it whites out. Let's see if we can get the. Um, that's obviously just. It's got very, very, very faint orange peel on it. But that's just uh, wet sanding. And then there's another layer of wet sanding on top of that. Still got the bonnet and that. I've done quite a bit on the roof, so the roof's quite good. The bonnet's got a wee bit more orange peel here on it. Um, yeah, and then after that, it's polishing compounds. I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. Apart from, apart from the decals are a bit raised because of the, the fingernail ones, but it's just a fun wee build. Is it better than a Herald? Um, <clears throat> the finish on it, I would say... Mm, about the same. About the same. Um, my hair also not quite finished, actually. Let's see if I can get it out of the case. I gave up on it because there was bits missing, so I stopped polishing it, and I haven't quite finished it off, and I've got things to do on it. It's a wee bit dusty. Um, see if I can... Similar level of shine to that on my Herald. As I say, I never finished it because parts of the kit were missing. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for when I'm finished. And that's not 2K. That's just... It's not perfect, but, you know... I'll stick it back in me. I think so. Yeah, I never, I never got round to finishing the Herald because I, I lost my mojo on it because uh, I had bits missing. And I thought, ugh, can't it be arsed with it? The Herald was a shit kit. That's a really bad kit. 67 or 69, what, the BL? I don't know, it's the FX one. <laughs> uh, I tried a, a candy coat on that, but I went a bit heavy on the hell there. Well, Shane Young's in here, Shane. I only just switched the laptop on. Hope everyone's good. No, I'm doing all right, mate. Uh, Which one looks sharp, JS? The the Herald. The silver was quite good. Uh, what was the silver that I used on it? Uh, was excuse my hand going across. Wasn't that one? Camera's going to blur out. It's not that one. Ah, uh, can't I find it. Don't know what I've done, mate. It must have hobby super chrome. Uh, can't find it. I don't know what I've done with it. It'll be somewhere. Uh, it was a Mr. Hobby um, Super Metallics. And then I, I tried to do a purple candy coat, but I was informed that you didn't need to thin the, the, the one down for the candy. And you do, and it kind of mucked up a bit. So it was like, yeah. So it wasn't quite a candy. But yeah, it's all right. It's a fun wee build. There's a fun wee build. It looks, I might finish it off at some point, but I've got a bumper missing and the front indicators are missing and, and stuff. Whereas this is a, I'm liking this one a lot more because it's, it's a bit nicer. Right, the dark one was 8,000, eh? Aye. Right. Yeah, so oh, it's quite busy in here for Friday. Yeah, so I'm thinking I'm a bit, as I say, not scheduling them, uh, because I don't know what my sleeping pattern is, and uh, trying to get back to the bench and stuff, trying to motivate myself. I'm thinking I might, I might just do impromptu uh, at the benches. So I'm not going to sort of put them up and go, oh, they'll be at such and such a time. I did it today because, you know, I had a wee bit of time to spare. It gives people a few minutes to see it. But if I'm on, I'll put it up, and if anybody comes into chat, they come in, and if nobody comes into chat, they don't come in. And it's just sort of, yeah, give it a try. Um, so it's not going to be like once a week, it'll be like whenever I can be bothered with my bench, unless it's something that I'm filming. See, I'm not filming this build. I'm filming the RZ one, but uh, I needed to do some prep on it, so. 
Either 69 Beetle and FLA Black and Green Metal Flake, you mixed yourself. Oh, that sounds nice, mate. Yeah, a heavy flake. Did you, did you slam? Did you slam it down and put big wheels and that on it? So these beetles look quite, quite funny slammed in. A heavy metallic on it. Tell you, I am liking the look of, and I'm trying to remember, is it Paul Shatland's just done one? I know it's in the dungeon. The Ravel uh, Samba van, Samba bus, it looks cool. I'm quite liking the look of that. I know David Hunter done a super um, 2K clear one and slammed it down and all that for uh, his nephew or something like that. But Paul's just done one and it's on the dungeon and that's looking, it's looking sweet. It looks a really nice kit. <clears throat> I like the old Beatles as well. Um, the old now I'm trying to think. Did the Beetle ever have a split screen, or was that just a camper van? Um, the only thing I didn't like about the Beatles is a bit like when you're driving the Porsches. Normal cars, the brake pedals are hinged for the top, and you press down. The Beatles, it's for the bottom, and it's very, very agricultural, like driving a lorry. Oh, have you not been approved yet, mate? I'll have a look and see if you've put an app in. Uh, I'll just click on there. Have a look in there. Click on there. Uh, I think you'll find you've just been approved, young man. And I'll just click back onto my chat. There you go. You can post your stuff up now. You'll be able to post your stuff up now. Again, if you want to sub to the channel, it's me. But, uh, what's Shane saying? I nearly took the plunge of the beetle by making it in a state hybrid because it was a Tammy one. I couldn't. See, aye, the Tammy one's a bit better. I'm pretty sure the one that Vince is doing is <coughs> a 124th Tammy one. And I mean, there's n this is curbside. There's no engine detail or anything on this, but the Tammy one's a bit a bit nicer. Uh, Vampus going, got a few models I redid recently. Only thing is, no decals. You ever try printing your own? Um, Colin's got a good video on his channel, Fester 67s workshop on how to make your own decals. So you'll need a decent um, high DPI printer and scanner combo and some white decal paper and some plastic oak. Oh, the early Beetle had an oval rear screen. All oh, right, the one at the back, yeah. Yeah, the back, the rear, yeah. Uh, a laser printer. I've, I've heard of laser printing your decals, but uh, I don't know which is better, to, to be fair. A colour laser, hmm. I know you can get colour laser decal paper. Be a bit more pricey than the inkjet one. Well, Jess is saying early Beatles had a split rear window. See, the thing is, <clears throat> a lot of the American spec stuff's different because of the regs and all that. They all hope that had the big fat bumpers in that in America. Because I mean, I was a Mercedes tech, and all the UK and European spec Mercedes had smaller bumpers. When they went to America, it was all big bumpers. I don't know, maybe just or fe fenders. Is it you call them fenders? Bumpers? Front fenders? Yeah, you just got to watch your cell in that dungeon vamping. Um, when you get out your cell, just pick the, the next empty one that you find. Um, but so, some of the folks snore, so you might want to be careful which one that you that you pick. But do be careful when you bend down in the shower to pick up the soap, because, yeah, you, you never know in these places. So. What's everybody got planned for the weekend? Anything exciting? I think I might have a pizza for my tea for a change. 
Oh look, I've got I've got bubble windows. Hey, bubble windows. Better than the the capstone ones, but yeah. <laughs> Quite a few folk in. Quite surprised. Beautiful and sunny outside, so I think when I'm when I finish this little stream, I'll jump on the bike for a little play for a little bit. And uh, I feel the need for speed. So for those that are new in the chat that don't know, I'm a biker. I've got a Suzuki GSR 750 on a 13-plate. And it's a nice nice motorcycle that I like to um, give it a bit of brap now and again. That's, <clears throat> that's a, excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. That's the official term for giving it a bit of the right wrist, a bit of brap. What's GS grilling, yard work and beer and hopefully some modelling. Now, <clears throat> when you're saying grilling, you're on about open air barbecue type. Whilst you're having a wee sweep about with a brush and a beer. Because that, that actually sounds quite good. So Mark's saying chippy T forty seven minutes. Oh you're going for a chippy tonight, Mark, yeah? <laughs> or is that, is this a new Russian tank, the chippy T forty seven mins? <laughs> I have your T at five, do you? Ah, sounds like that sounds a good a good day. That actually, yeah. Get the barbecue on. <clears throat> Pretend you're sweeping the yard so that your wife thinks you're busy. A beer in the other hand, so <clears throat> I mastered it as a an apprentice. A one-handed brush, you know, being able to brush the yard with one 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 hand, so you can have a beer in the other. Yeah, and a bit of modelling later on. Yeah, that sounds good. Mind you, yeah, modelling after maybe one or two too many beers might not be quite such a good idea, but yeah. What links are you sticking up, Lynn? Yeah? I know you've got a spanner, but what links are you popping up on here? <laughs> Is that for your channel? Oh, it's Collins how to make decals video. Right, okay, I'll let you off. I'll let you off. It's just like, huh? Random YouTube links. Ah, uh, Collins decals page. Yeah. Yeah, he, he went and he's, he's done a video that goes right from... Um, because you can, a lot of these decals, if you have a wee look in the internet, Colin's really good at it. Uh, you look in the internet, sometimes you can actually download the sheets. Or if you want to do custom decals, you can uh, download the images that you want to make into decal. And then he shows you how to resize them all in Photoshop and everything like that. And then test print for size and then print it on your decal paper. And then how to do your, your fixative using the plastic coat. So it's, yeah. Um, it's quite a long video, but a lot of us asked them to go into quite a lot of detail. So it's a good hour's length of video, but it goes right through all the processes. Uh, I'm trying to remember if it shows applying them or not. I can't mind. Uh, what's Shane doing? Nothing exciting Saturday. Make a casserole. Oh, casserole. A bit of modelling. Build some more paint racks. Out of old furniture. So you're going for the, the do your own paint rack thing. Looks quite nice actually when they do all that. What's Lynch saying? I'm spamming your live show, Terry. Ah, I've got the you got the band hammer now. Oh You just watch what you do with that band hammer. You know what women are like with hammers. They end up hitting their thumbs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was saying he tries to pretend he's doing the yard work, but my wife never lets it slide. Aye. So, yeah, aye, you need to learn the, the, the knack of sort of aye, have, having to brush your hand looking busy. Yeah. So get one of those hats, that, <laughs> funny hats that you put the beer cans in and the straws in. <laughs> Let's go about the yard with one of them. 
Len ba- <laughs> Aye, Len Banhammer Dipple, yeah. Be afraid, be very afraid. Lynn's about, yeah. At, at least we're lucky that Lynn's of a certain age that she probably doesn't get premenstrual anymore, so we're pre- probably quite safe. <laughs> Sorry, Lynn. But yeah. Oh dear, yeah. When the hormones kick in, everybody run for your lives. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny. Yeah, I was supposed to, supposed to be going to a wedding anniversary tonight, but it's away on the other side of Edinburgh. Uh, trying to get there is a nightmare, and I've not been feeling too great. So, unfortunately, uh, not to be going. But, uh, do, give, be good to give my liver a break, actually. Scotsman, I've got livers twice the size of um, of normal human beings. You might have heard that. Why is your face red, Lynn? <laughs> I wouldn't embarrass you, do you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the only thing worse than a woman when she's premenstrual is a woman with a hammer in her hand. Yeah. And premenstrual. <laughs> it's quite an awkward shape to sand this, actually. But it'll be all right. I'm not going to go too daft on it because it is just a, a wee start. Of it. I will try and do a better job when I go to do the Porsche that I'm doing. I'm getting quite good with these lacquers. It's all practice, practice, practice. A little bit of practice. What's Vampin saying? I'm not touching any of that. Any of what? <laughs> Wonder if I can ban Terry for making my face red. Um... You could probably, oh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't want to try it just now, but I mean, uh, if I was in the chat, you could possibly, no, I, I wouldn't try it. Oh, practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, Lynn, um, your, your, your toy can be taken away from you, you know. I can take your little toy away. I can put your, your little toy hammer away in the toy box, never to be seen again. Yeah, my biggest problem in here is <clears throat> I'm not very good with housework. And obviously, when you're spraying lacquers and doing shiny stuff, you don't want dust in that. And yeah, mm-hmm. that's my biggest problem. It's not the actual spraying or anything. It's, yeah, I've not got a very hygienic workshop, shall we say, because it's full of man debris. You know, when you're man cave, you have man debris. Some of you guys will know what I'm on about, you know. Sitting at the bench solid for 24 hours. And it starts to smell a bit manly. <laughs> I'll just get the inside of that a wee quick. Once over for any roughness. Let's take any kick off. I think I'll go into the finer stuff now. So that's a th- that one done. Excuse me, I'm going to get it. Oh, I'm quite surprised what a nice day it's turned into. It was a bit, a bit rubbish earlier on. I'll be drinking water. I've not actually tried the wheels up against it because I'm I'm doing something a bit different because the the beetle comes with chrome, so I've I've decided to go instead of go with chrome I'm going with with gold. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like when it's all when it's all done. I've done gold bumpers and gold handles and 
you'll maybe make out the gold VW and the gold handle in the front. So I, I'm doing <coughs> gold where all the chrome was. But it's just a bit of fun. Happy flowers, bright yellow and gold where the, where the, the chrome was. It's something a bit silly. Try to see if I can see the box for that start. I can't, I can't see it any of it. What's this one? No, that's a different one. That's a Peter Bolt. Oh, I'm maybe throwing it out. I have maybe thrown it out. I mean, that's all there. That's all the interior and that done for it. I'm sitting there. And then I've got all my other accoutrements. It's probably all dusty by now. But redo the, the indicators and that. But like so the bumper and everything, I've done them all gold instead of instead of the uh the silver. Chrome. Actually, I'm missing a bumper. Why don't tell me I've lost a bumper? It'll be somewhere. Oh, I found it. I found it. Oh, this place is bad for eating stuff. Carpet, carpet monster in this place is huge. So, uh, there's a there's a front bumper, but it's in gold instead of in chrome. Ah. Yeah, Peter Bolt's going to be a beastie. What's the chat saying? Shane saying, love the gold, sets the paint off really well. Yeah, I thought the yellow and the gold would go quite well. Um, obviously, I've done the, the side runner's gold as well. It's a bit... I mean, Lynn found it as well. When you're putting this together, a lot of it's twisted, doesn't quite fit right. And, uh, it's a bit, but it's a starter kit. It's a bit of fun. Well, yeah, interior's all, all ready to go in. Uh, it's just the, the windows. Um, John Gordon's alive. She Sheets Bennett was the one that told me that it's a, a proper pain in the buttocks to... Uh, I was just trying to see if my PC laptop was charging. Uh, proper pain in the buttocks to get the windows to fit because where they go in the A and the B pillars, Apparently, you, you've got to file and sand them a little bit to fit. What's oh, fun? Pin saying, looked at that link you gave about your friend at aircraft. So, going to get that uh, harder and steam bit kit. Hold on, that kit, and just airbrush a little Um, I had a harder and steam bit. Um, oh, the dual one. Didn't like it. I couldn't get to grips with it. I gave it away to a friend. Um, just personal preference. There's nothing wrong with them, but I prefer to feel like the I was. Sand there, Nissan GTR 34 body and a Mustang. Yeah, so you're kind of doing the same thing as me, vamping. What's Shane doing? Finishing up the Kubo wagon. Aye, that looks quite a good kit, that. And carry on with the Heller H van. Yeah, aye. That that Heller van's nice. I like that. The one that's got like corrugated iron on the side. I do like that one. Yes. I could, well, the Beetle. Aye, no more, no more painting on the Beetle. Um, apart for the rear indicators and uh, the... Oh, no, I've got a wee bit in the dash to paint. Um... Bloody, get this bit off the. There's been a bit that's floating about in the water and it's stuck to the inside of my painting, it's annoying me. Here we go, we have retrieved that. Yeah, I've got uh, the roof cloth to do, the dashboard to do, paint wise, and the indicators, but yeah, all the main painting's done on it. Not the best of fits when it goes together. I mean, even the wheels to go over the the axles are they're the wrong size, so they're going to be like. Whoa. 
what's happening in the chat. Using two cheap Chinese airbrushes at the moment. Not bad, but getting by. Yeah, if you if you can get, it really does make a difference if you get a, a, a better airbrush. Um, if you've been managing, I mean, a lot of folk manage quite well the cheap Chinese ones, and they just use them for like primer coats or whatever, or just for lacquer. But, uh, as we've been saying, was time I moved on to better things. So just got a cheap forty dollar cut on eBay. I got a couple of cheap Chinese airbrushes with my, my compressor, but yeah, I broke it on the first day, so. What's Jess Idaho saying? My lovely wife just surprised me with a Flames of War M4 Sherman 5 tank platoon. 1-100 scale. Oh, optimizer time. That's almost into Chris's tiny, tiny little, yeah, they'll be like that size. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the car kits are not that expensive, Frampin. Uh, oh, you learn a lot on airbrush and the cheap kit. It's a lot easier with a decent brush, so. Um, definitely a lot easier with a decent brush. Ah, so you're only using automotive clear coats. Yeah. It's, it's more to do with the spray pattern. You can... You can find tuna cheap airbrush. There's plenty of videos on it on YouTube on how to, you know, using beeswax to seal them up and um, honing and polishing the, the needle and all that. And, you know, depends what kind of cheap Chinese airbrushes you've got. But, I mean, they worked okay. Uh, the problem I had was it was a little nozzle tip, just it was made of like plasticine or something. As soon as I cleaned it once and put the tip back on, it fell apart. But, you get a better spray pattern with a decent brush. More control over it. I mean, I just use... Uh, I need to get myself something that's a bit finer. I mean, uh, I want a Revolution CR. Um, I've got two. One for my general use, primers and acrylics, and the other one that I just use for clear coats. But they're both 0.5s. <clears throat> and I'm getting to a stage now... Um, um, Playing about with figure painting and stuff. Um, this is just base coated. It's no, you know, anywhere. It's just got all the base colours down. Um, I was looking at the uh, Badger Sutter, the point two. I might give that a try. Um, I don't think these stickers are very good for putting on the mid right in the middle of the bench when you've got water on it. I don't think that was a good idea. <laughs> What's Shane saying? Building a little easy kit now and then is fun. It gives a break to bigger kits. Yeah, I mean, this was the group build thing. <clears throat> um, might do another one near the end of the year, but... Uh, because I build so slow and I'm a bit of a sort of, I'm my own worst enemy. It's like, oh, I like to do the best job that I can on everything, even if it's just a wee cheap kit. Doing something like that detracts me away from doing other stuff. So, yeah, because we did we did two back to back and ended up getting none of my own stuff done. Because I've, I've got, obviously, as you, you know, I'm a YouTuber as well. So if I'm, I want to fill the build, fill my build, stuff like this sort of takes away from it and I can't film it. Yeah, flesh stones. One's doing nothing, trying to clear a path to your desk. Vida or Vida airbrushes? Yeah, that, that's a uh, ning tong, ting tong, yeah. Yeah, Chinese knockoffs. Yeah, Lynn's, Lynn's working on finding our bench. It's there somewhere. It's, is it over there, Lynn? Or is it, is it over there? It's, it's somewhere in the living room, but... Uh, She's no long moved house and she's got piles of cardboard boxes. But she has got a perfect grade Millennium Falcon. I actually find the rest of my house gets inaccessible because if I order stuff up and I get cardboard boxes, they either go in my man cave or I just fling them in the living room. And then uh, there was one day a couple of weeks ago I tried to go into the living room and I couldn't get in for cardboard boxes so I had to break some of them up because I don't really use my living room. I don't watch daily, so... 
I'm usually in here in my cave. Uh, I suppose I better get the next, the next grade, the 1200 done, and then after that I can do me polishing compounds. But it's absolutely gorgeous out there, so I might go for a wee, a wee blast on the bike and a wee highlight. But that's half four already. I've been sitting yapping nonsense for an hour. Theory doctors. And it's coming up nice and smooth. Apart for these stupid decals, but these are the, this is the bits that take time, I suppose, isn't it? You're sitting here, especially the guys that do the two K. They'll be at it for ages. I'm just trying to think of what to have for my tea. What are you having for your dinners tonight? Dinner, dinner in Scotland or your tea? Your evening meal? Or I suppose, Lynn, if you're across America, you're just thinking about lunch. What am I having for lunch? South Africa. Mm. What, what's the national dish across there? Because mm. we've got interesting... Interesting food across here, don't you? I certainly wouldn't want to eat those bloody things that Fox has been eating. What is it? Deep fried crickets? Nah, I'll, I'll give that a miss. I think I'd rather peel my eyeballs and rub them in salt than eat crickets. I mean, they're full of protein and stuff, yeah, but so is, you know, so is chicken. Two bedroom house and a one. I have a two bedroom house and a one and a one bedroom house. How can you have a two bedroom house and a one bedroom house? So I'm pretty cramped for space. I don't quite get the two bedroom house and a one bedroom house, or is it a one bedroom house and you put two beds in it? What's Jess Ido saying? What brand of clear coat did you use in the Beetle? I used. And it's a. Hot lacquer. Uh, it's Mr. Color GX100. That's what I used on it. Uh, thinned with Mr. Color self leveling thinner. Um, and it was a GX paint that I used for the yellow as well. Um, new Ranger paints, GX Color, uh, GX4. Uh, this one was Kiara Yellow. And Porsche I'm going to be doing and lighting up is going to get some of this stuff on it. Herman Red. So, just trying these out. Uh, it's mostly just primary colours I've got in that just now, but they're, they're, they go on really well. They cover really well. I mean, for yellow, that's went on lovely. Um, but I did put it on a, a neutral yellow uh, base. No, it's time to throw away some or most of this junk away, Lent. Yeah, you're a bit like me, but I mean, yeah. That requires organisation and planning and effort, and yeah. Quiche, jacket, potato and salad. I've not had quiche for ages. Bacon and mushroom quiche. Mm. Cheese and onion. Jack well, I've had a jacket potato recently. I like, I like jacket potato wet. Loads of butter, some salt, and then loads of cheddar cheese on top. Absolutely loads. I mean, big mound. Huge, big baked tatty, loads of butter, big mound of cheese, and then I like tuna and mayonnaise um, with, and sweet corn uh, on the top. I like that. I like that in the big teddy. Yes, I do. That Mr. Colour paint is a lacquer, yes. Um, you'll find that... I'll just dry, dry my hands for a second. Um, all right, so that's an aqueous. That's a super metallic. And that's a... Right, there's a... Quite an easy way to, uh, hold on, 
There's an ordinary mustard colour. Quite an easy way to, to see them, actually. Right. So that's that's a lacquer as well. That's a, a gloss black, right? Mustard colour. It's got a blue label, dark blue label, and it's just called Mustard Colour. Mr. Hobby, Mr. Colour. That's lacquer. Uh, the GX range are all lacquers. Again, dark blue label. Um, the Super Metallics, again a lacquer. They come with a red label. And the other one that they do is Mr. Hobby Colour. They call it Hobby Colour rather than Mr. Colour. The Hobby Colour is like your Tamiya. That's your aqueous. So if it's Hobby Colour, it's acrylic. And if it's Mr. Colour, it's a lacquer. Oh, the chair's groaning under my weight here. Need to stop eating so many pies. Yeah, I, I tend, I'm tending to switch across to lacquers now for all my metallics. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> I still, I use Tamiya, I use Mister Holy Aquarius, I use Mister Color, um, and then I've got all the Citadel ones and stuff like that. And I've got some of the the mag stuff. Not a fan, but uh, um, I've I've not yet tried any of you. Um, the fact that it's kind of pre-mixed and it's like, well, why you're paying for less paint? You know. I'd rather buy the neat stuff and, and um, thin it myself. All the things with lacquer, I mean, they're a lot harder wearing. They've got that smell to it, eh? But if, you, if you've got to be using lacquers, you want to get yourself that self leveling thinner. You can use that with um, the Tamiya paints as well because Tamiya's are more of a, nearer a lacquer than, a, than an acrylic. Um, and I used to have some issues with some of the MIG paints where they would uh, fish eye, um, just because it wasn't, they've been a bit funny to spray. There were certain ones that weren't very good to spray. Um, and it was just due to surface tension issues. You put a couple of drops in Mr. Color Self Level and thinner in them and spray, spray, spray flawlessly. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the paint. So you, oh, and I use, um, on the figurine, I'm really enjoying these life colour paints. Um, you get them in the kits. I mean, that's a that's a flesh. Oh, focus. That's a flesh tone one. Um, these are true acrylics, though. They are not like the Tamiya's in that. So you can you, you can thin them with water and everything. There's a really high pigment count in them. So yeah, I use life colour as well um, for my figurines. If you're doing lacquers, JS, the self leveling thinner is a must have. Yeah. Um, if you if you're doing shiny, uh, even if you're using um, Tamiya gloss paints, um, say you say you want to do a car just with Tamiya. Um, oh, that's clear red. But, um, say it was X seven red or something like that. If you use uh, X twenty A, you'll get a nice finish. If you use uh, if you do it with a self leveling thinner, you'll get a, an even better finish because it's got the self leveling properties of the of the thinner itself. Um, so yeah, it's just because of those particular. I know that there's certain. Now, what one was it? A gunk cup. I tried it in. Oh, one of the Steinol rays. Um, clear colours and it just went to gunk. So always take, before you whap it in your airbrush, always test it, get, get a little palette and put a little drop in and mix it and see how it mixes up. Because uh, sometimes you'll find like, um, some of these Citadel paints, you, you can thin them with X20A and put them through your airbrush. Or you can do it with water and a wee drop of retarder and flow improver and stuff in them. But the one that you can't do it, is with the base ceramite white because it just turns to a big pile of goop. Well, that's just learning your paints. Hello, Frankie goes to Hollywood. How you doing, mate? Have you got that golf finished yet? <laughs> nice to see you in, buddy. 
Well, it's Jess Idaho saying, I'll be grilling burgers and hot links. Are you talking about link sausages? Or if you're feeling lazy, pizza, pizza on the barbecue. Hmm. That's different. Barbecue pizza. Yeah. Honestly, that could be quite... No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Grilling. Hmm. Is it grilling or barbecuing? Yeah, I call it barbecuing. It's hot, hot coals with a griddle on the top, but barbecue. Oh, pizza delivered. Yeah, that's, I think that's what I'm fancying tonight, but I don't know what flavour or... What's Frankie saying? You're fine. Unfortunately, golf is not ready. You still have to do the windows. Yeah. I tend to find the kit windows sometimes let you down because I've not got very good optical clarity on them, but... Uh, You'll be fine. It's a decent kit, that. Um, yeah, certainly a decent kit. Quite funny sitting to chat to you a lot on a Friday afternoon. Ah. So I take it all just pinged up on your feeds and went smooth as live at the bench. Not doing an awful lot. I'm just sitting chatting mostly, am I? Yeah, should really get on, but it's getting there. It's getting there. Not perfect, but it's getting there. Grilling is hot and fast. Traditional barbecue is low and slow and smoky. All right, okay. And Frankie's going to try and get finished at the weekend. Don't rush it, Frankie. You've done a cracking job in it. You've lit it up. You've done a wee bit of modification to it with the wheels and everything. You're working on your garage. Take your time. I like it. You've lit it all up and everything. That's cool. So, yeah, I'm going to be attempting that with my Porsche. So that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't envisage any problems with it. Um, just trying to hide it all in the car for what I'm wanting to do. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Because I don't think the bonnet or the boot on the front of the Porsche opens. And that might be where I'll be able to hide a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll see when I get into the kit. Because if I can get the power pack and everything hidden in the kit and the switches underneath it for the indicators and everything, um, see if I can possibly light up the dash, uh, indicators, headlights. What's this? Yes, I do. Well, the time has come when I want to close the chapter. So get I get it finished and move on to the next one. That, that's the problem I've got. I tend to find I get distracted easily. So I'm doing that for a video bill, but that's been on, off, on, off, on, off. I've got about 10 builds on the go at the moment, and they're all sitting in primer, and it's like sometimes I just want to build things. So I build a lot of things, and then they've all got to get painted. And I've got to paint them before I get room to do anything else, and that's, that's a bit of fail at so once I actually start getting things finished and the way I can move on to something else. Um, yeah. But the wee things I can do in the background, I mean, I've got all those Warhammer figures and everything to paint. I was right into them at one point and then I just went, nah, <laughs> this is a bit repetitive. <laughs> so I can see why people take shortcuts when they're doing it. Watched quite a few videos of the guys just airbrush them, dry brush them, and done. But it's my first time painting Warhammer, so yeah. And I'm I'm not gonna be gaming. I'm not gonna be building loads and loads and loads of it. Yeah, Frankie, what's going to be your next um your next project? Ah, the scale garage. Did you see the one that the guy posted up in the dungeon? Was it yet? yesterday or was it Wednesday when I did my last live stream it's a full resin kit in 124th that was about 60 pounds um and it, it looks quite good it's a, a lot a lot of resin noises it was quite a heavy but yeah uh, definitely cheaper if you can scratch build it because uh, it looks like you're gonna be scratch building it Frankie aren't you with all your tiny bricks 
lots and lots of tiny little one twenty fourth bricks that he's putting together for the for the floor and everything. So that's going to be kind of awesome when it's done. But I like the whole idea that you took the cardboard box. The car, the car was sort of a rolling chassis, and you, you took the cardboard box and you, you cut wee windows out of it and put it in the window for the light and photographed it, and it just looked cool. That's made you want to do the whole garage. You've heard about it, but you've not seen it. Well, if you go into the dungeon, there was a, a chap that popped in um, that joined the dungeon on Wednesday. I uh, can't recall the name off the top of my head at the moment. Um, so he's got a, a 124th resin and it, it, it's done all the instructions and what all the parts look like and everything like that if you want to look at it. But it's, um, it's quite impressive. It's, yeah, £60 pound for a for a garage. Oh, it's like, whoa, whoa. But it's a kit in itself, isn't it? Yeah. And of course you can, uh, if you're good at the old scratch building and diorama making, you can make that kind of stuff yourself without, you know, having to use resin. Use, use stuff that's about you, balsa wood and styrene sheet and bits of cardboard and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing these garage as well, JS. Um, Yeah, he's, he's shown us some pictures of his bricks so far, but that's that's kind of... So that's the floor of it you're doing, Frankie, isn't it? Starting for the floor up, get the floor done first, and then do the rest of the garage. Yeah. I don't really have room for stuff like that. I think I'll do a couple of wee dials. I've, I've got my... But the guy's slagging off my two-part die or the one that my tank sits on. So that's all right for sort of normal tanks, what I would call green tanks. But um, I've got a few desert ones. So I'll have to go up making a little, uh, just a little vignette, a little de desert one, just for photography more than anything else. Not really to display them on. It's just like if I've got, if I've got a scene I can put a green tank on or a green vehicle on, on a normal sort of background with a muddy road, and then something with desert on it. I can sort of photograph what I've got without having to have like two million dials. Uh, what's the SN? The GW kits are a lot of fun and easy to build, but damn, the prices are a nightmare. Um, I've got, is it the Rhino or whatever it is or moustache? Um, I'm thinking about lighting that up as well. Um, yeah, it was like, oh, I'm just trying to mind now. It was £35, £35 for the Rhino and £35 for 10 figures. But they've got such a weird pricing structure because they price it on the value of hit points in the game rather than, you know, how much plastic's in it. Because um, Paul Stewart got, uh, he was doing a lot, he did a base with a lot of walkways and a boat and everything, and there was a hell of a lot of plastic in it. It wasn't very expensive. Because there's no points value in the game. And so it was cheap. And it's like, it's a strange way to price things. Rather than the, the cost of manufacture and the amount of plastic it's in it, it's how much it's worth in the game. But yeah, that's, they maybe need to review that a bit. Because they've got a lot of really nice stuff in the Age of Sigmar. Um, they've got a lot of nice dragons and stuff. I do like the dragons. Um... I used to like, I used to see in shops all the pewter dragons, all the jewels and that, and when I was younger, but they were really expensive. So I've always liked dragons. Oh, so you're just going to do it like a, a pretend concrete pour then, Frankie, just, uh, just even and maybe grey. Try and give it a concrete effect. Stipple it. You know, like when they put a concrete floor down. Um and get a, a lollipop stick, and you know how you tamp it down, and you get the wee lines in it? You could do it kind of like that. Oh, just an idea. You know, when they're, laying, when they're laying concrete floors, they have the wooden battens down the side, they pour the concrete in, and then they draw the wood across the top, and they tamp, 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 and it leaves little ridges in the, in the concrete. Do that with lollipop sticks or something. But yeah, you'll have your own ideas of what you want to do. 
wait till the polyfiller or whatever you're using in the base goes off and tamp it, give it a rough cast concrete kind of look. Yeah, I think I'm nearly done with the sanding. Nearly done. Which is good because I'll get onto painting at some point. So hello 14 viewers it's in. Um, if you're not in the main YouTube, if you click the little uh, YouTube icon down in the, the bottom right, you're getting water everywhere here. Come into the actual uh, main YouTube page, you can sit and chat with us all. There's a fine bunch of nutters in today. As I say, I'm just sitting at the bench doing what I'm, I need to get done. Because you guys are keeping me company, it's a bit more interesting for me anyway. I'm sitting sand in a car can't be very interesting for you guys, but it's a bit more fun for me because I've got a bit of company in the chat. So it's just a thing I'm trying out, a wee bit of lives at the bench. Not going to stream them at the same time other shows is on. No point. It's more a, if I'm sitting at the bench and I'm doing something that I don't need to film for my channel, I'll just fire a live at the bench stream up and if you're about, you can watch it. You've been signing for a while, I've been signing for a while. Yeah, I've been signing for a good hour, it's just, yeah. This, what, ugh. The thing is, the only person that's probably going to get to see this in the flesh ever will be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you will get to see it in photographs, but sometimes photographs can hide a lot of stuff in a photograph. You can make something look really good in a photograph, but when you see it close up, the model's a bit shit. So, yeah. Clever photography goes a long way. You know where the blemish is, so you don't photo it for that angle, or photograph it from that angle. You photograph it for the angle that the, the blemish isn't there, or... You know, use the flash so it whites out everything, and <laughs> yeah, never, never use a, never use a flash when you're trying to photograph your models. It just whites them out. But then I'm no a photography expert by any means. Right, I think that's enough sanding. It's going to be cutting compound next, so I'm going to dry this off a bit. Give it a little dry off with a little bit of a layer dry anyway. Um, not too worried. It's just I don't know if the cotton compound will go watery when I when I use it if it's still soaking wet. Hey Philip, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm just it's just something I'm trying new, Philip. Um, I get bored sometimes. We were getting quite a bit of um, bit of shine in that now. Maybe see it catching the light. Um, yeah, I just thought I would try live at the bench, just to get me to the bench. Just yeah. So that's that's kind of um, getting. That's just uh, obviously um, micro mesh. So I'm going to go on with uh, polishing compounds next. Because um, it'll be a bit finer. So let's get this out of the way. My soggy wet kitchen roll. And my water. Here, let's, stick that. let's stick that across there. I can guarantee you when I walk out the room I'll knock it onto the floor. But there we go. Right, so the portion compound I have got, I got it from uh, Hero Boy, and it's a uh, micro, -glo micro gloss liquid abrasive. I haven't tried it yet. Let's have a recap on it. Yeah, I expect it might need a wee shake up. What's vamping saying? I made a diorama with some nature pieces from trees and some duck and some polystyrene blocks as well. A lot of the SAP my cell phone wants to bray. <laughs> Alongside some models in the laptop. Yeah, um, 
using stuff about you, mate. Uh, I need to actually get out on the bike and go up and, you know, get a few wee rocks and stones and stuff and um, some nice dried out twigs and stuff. It's all lying about. Um, I know Fox used to earth out the garden for his dial, but did you bake yours in the oven? Because um, obviously there's tons of little microbes and bacteria and that, and then you build your dial and all of a sudden this web of fungus comes out. I don't think it, I would be using earth on mine, although I have thought about it in some instances, because you can't get anything more realistic for dirt than sift dirt, I suppose. Let's land going brains. Brains. Brains faggots. Anybody remember them? <laughs> All right, so let's see what this stuff's like. I've not used it before. I'll get a little bit on here. Uh, let's, let's start out of the polishing. So it's like a very, very, very fine teacup that you would use um, on a car, you know, if you've oxidised your paint. So you've basically got to keep rubbing it till it disappears, it said. Once this is all done, I will uh, will wash it and polish it. But so, yeah, it's just very, very, very fine abrasive. Um, particle suspended in a liquid. So it's a bit like both polishing a tiny, tiny, tiny car. I don't know why you should try to block that one out. Electronic brains is a nightmare. I must have thought I was saying something else. Then it works and it doesn't. Yeah, Fox baked his dirt at 180 for two hours. Yeah, um... Yes, uh... I'd thought about using dirt before. I actually, when I'd thought about using dirt, I hadn't thought about baking it in the oven. That's, of course, when Fox says, oh, yeah, you might get, like, wee spores, wee fungus spores or anything that kills them all off. And it's like, mm, yeah, that's right. Fair enough. Well, let's see how this uh, polishing compound's doing. It's quite, um, I can feel it gripping. I can feel the abrasive gripping in it, so... Let's see, let's take, buff it up with the other side. Oh, wow. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this stuff works. Wow. But it's wiping out the camera and everything. Um, yeah, I'll try to take the shot. Can, like, if I put my hand in front of it, you can maybe see the reflection better. And that's not 2K. That's just that lacquer I'm using and cutting compounds and stuff. So oh, I'm happy with that. So I'll keep working at it. Uh, Vampin says he only did 60 minutes. Because it brings the flavour out. It did, yeah. I'm trying to remember what Fox said it, it smelled like. It smelled like, was it chocolate or something? I can't remind. He said it was actually a nice smell. Well, I'm really impressed how much just um, using this cutting compound as because um, I, I managed to spray it well enough I didn't actually get a lot of orange peel on it. It's just like micro micro orange peel. Does that is that even a word? Um, so I did get a little bit of orange peel, but very, very, very little because I, I thinned it right down and took the pressure right down. Tends to be when you when you put two and I did it in uh, two lots of coats as well. Uh, two two lots of thinnish coats. You go in with too heavy a coat, and it kind of dimples, and that's what gives you your orange peel. Shiny brownies are cookies, fresh brownies. Ooh, as long as you didn't put them in ice cream, I didn't mind. Yeah, I'm not into this chocolate fudge brownie nonsense. Chocolate chips, aye. Fudge, aye. And ice cream. 
but you can keep all that putting cake in your ice cream stuff. No, no, no fan of that. I'm not liking the idea of that. Yeah. So yeah, this is. Oh, I'm really quite chuffed with this. As I say, first time using this cutting compound, and it's coming up lovely. So just using a one of these cotton makeup pads that. Uh, Ladies or even guys that like their guy liner use, you know, for taking makeup off and stuff. So let's just give the side a wee, a wee buff up. Obviously, I'm going to have to wash this because you'll always get wee bits of powder and <coughs> a bit like when you're um, you're polishing your car. There's always wee bits of white left for some reason. But uh, yeah, that stuff's lovely. Let's try to get it out of all the gaps. Don't want it to dry on in thick bits. Or I'll be forever polishing it to try and get the bloody stuff off. Wow. Did you see the shine in that? That's uh, shiny. It doesn't take long, that stuff. This is really quite good. I can still see very, very, very fine orange peel in that. I'll maybe show up in photographs, but yeah, yeah. That's looking nice. I'm impressed with this stuff. What time is it? Back at five already? Bloody hell. How time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. I take it you guys have just got me on while well, you're on at the bench, have you? Oh, obviously, Lynn's not. Lynn's just, you know, sitting there in her lovely big new rocking chair she's got going, Howdy, peeps. Haven't you, Lynn? What's Lynn saying? Maybe it was an hour. We were talking about baking earth again. This I recommend when you're using dirt uh, to make a dirt brownie that you bake it at 180 for three hours. I just thought it was quite novel that he baked it and then I thought, yeah, he's got, he's, there's a reason behind that. Yeah, I'll need to wash this and get a wee toothbrush on it to get, there's a, because it's getting that shiny now that it's right now. There's a wee griddled, griddles along the back that obviously all the, the teacup polishing compound and everything's going in. <sighs> really quite impressed with this stuff though. Mmm. Wee bits of hair sticking to some of the... You can see one or two wee bits that I haven't quite got with it. With wee blemishes on along the runners there. Not much I can do about that, really. It'll be fun getting that stuff at the grills, though. Oh, well, you're rocking away while you're watching me, are you? Aye, that chair looks bra. Lynn got herself one of these big sort of leather um, recliner rocking chair type affairs. And she sits there and rocks away. Making the occasional parrot noise, don't you, Lynn? Or is it her parrot? Mm -hmm. We never, we never quite know. We never quite know. Yeah, the only thing about this, this particular lacquer that I used, if you'd, any of these guys do get it, is it takes a good two days to cure. Don't go near it with cutting compounds or, or sanding compounds for at least two days because it, it, it does stay soft and you can mark it with a fingernail and, and stuff like that. But once it once it's fully cured, it's yeah, it's lovely. All right, so that's shiny. That's nice and shiny. That bit shiny enough for me. That's all nice and shiny. I think I've got this side to do, haven't I? Can't remember what side I've done and what I've not done now because they're just too too shiny. 
Your way, Len. Oh, you've got to do your laundry before it gets mad packed in here. Squawk, says sweetie. Bye, my loves. Right, I'll even get your laundry done before you can get in at the, the laundry. Everybody's stolen the machines. Seems to be quite a, a big thing in America. We used to have it. I remember when I was younger, my granny used to work in a laundry. Um, but everybody having their modern day white appliances now, the laundry are kind of dying out. Seemingly America's still a big thing for them, is it? You will come out. Yeah, definitely think this is a really nice uh, cutting compound abrasive. I like it. So I've got that stuff there. Good old Mike Kemen at Hero Boy. What's Jess I was saying? Hey Terry, I like your Smendrich's RAF tool stand. Would look cool with the Flying Tigers AVG uh, album. RAF tool stand, I've not seen that one, mate. Is that the flat ones? The one that doubles up as a doubles up as a wet pallet? Oh this. Oh this thing. It's got a sharp mouth on it, mate. It's kind of hidden. There's a sharp mouth there. It's got a sharp mouth on it. There's a Viking, a, a crazy Viking chap that made that. They look cool. Flying colours, AVG emblem. Right, see, I, I don't build much in the way of aircraft, so I'm totally lost when you're, you're talking about aviation stuff. This kind of breaks up a little bit, this bit. Yeah, yeah I'm not very clued up in the aircraft, um, to be perfectly honest. I know a man who is, but yeah. Um, aircraft take up too much room, and I'm not a fan of itsy bitsy 170 second scale stuff. So I've built some in my youth. But we're talking, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Um, I, I built a Spitfire, a Hurricane, and a P-51 Mustang when I came back to the hobby. But, I mean, they, they weren't that great. I didn't have my airbrush, or they were brush painted. So they are nothing to write home about. I wasn't overly impressed with them. Didn't know about decal solutions and all that sort of thing, you know. Oh, I can hear the ice cream man out. Oh, ice cream! Everything stops for ice cream. Yeah, I'll need to give this a wash because this this stuff just sticks to any wee rough bit. Oh, it's gorgeous and shiny. I need to get a bit more on this A pillar. It's not very. The A-pillar's a hard bit to get in it. I'm wondering if I'll be better with this soft cloth. Let's try a wee bit in this soft cloth. I didn't know if it would be too harsh for the... for using on a plastic model, but we shall see. Get it into the A-pillar. It might be a bit better than the, that fluffy stuff because that's just putting fluff everywhere. So I'll give that a wee buff up. See how we go with that. Give that a wee rub. I mean, the paint marks not perfect on this, but I'm always learning. It's getting really warm here now. It's not quite as shiny as the rest of the... That needs a bit more work, that bit. Where's the bit I was doing it with? I've lost it. What have you done with it? There it is. What's Jess Ido was saying? American volunteer group, fighter pilots who fought for the Chinese before the end of the war. Ah, right. 
Yeah, my military history and that's not very good. I mean, we did history in that at school, but I mean, there's nothing, nothing spectacular. So which war are you on about? Are you on about Vietnam or Second World War? Or... There's been that many wars, eh? To work on this a pillar in the bonnet now. Oh, it's really quite warm here today. Right, the only thing about using this cloth is it tends to soak up a bit more in the cotton wool, but it's not leaving too many fibres behind, which is probably better for the model. World War Two. Ah, right. So any of you guys that do shiny, do you go to this extent when you're doing it? Or is it just like, ah, that'll do? Just sort of try some new products out and some new techniques and see where it got me. But that little A panel is doing a little bugger to get into. Let's give it a wee buff up and see what's... Don't know if this is as good for buffing up as a cotton pad is. I think the cotton pad's better for buffing up. Let's give it a buff up with a cotton pad. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. Yeah, the A-pillar bit's hard to get in it because it's got a line in there and the line, oh god, it's fighting out that much because it's catching the light. Yeah, it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. Bonnet could do another wee going over. And the A-panel on this side. <clears throat> It's settling itself out. Give it a wee mix up. Get the air panel on this side done. Yeah, so I'm not going to be on for much longer. Another 15 minutes or so. Um, just sort of come on for a couple of hours. Oh, I'll maybe go for a wee bit longer, but uh, it'll be tea time soon. And a lot of guys will be going away for their tea, or their dinner, evening meal, whatever you want to call it. So it's given me a couple of hours at the bench and I've got a stage further with what I needed to get on with. Which means if I want to sit and chill tonight and just play a game on the PC, or if I want to actually get onto the detail paint and the dash on this, I can do that. Um, start getting it to completion and it'll be another model done and I can go, yay! And then I need to start on my... Obviously, I'll not be able to stream live when I'm doing my um, electronic ones because I'm going to be videoing them, videoing them, and I'm going to be videoing the post build as well. Um, but obviously, if I'm doing stuff off camera on the Porsche for the video, I can always come on and do a, a real live stream. So yeah. Depends if you guys enjoy them, if people come into chat. I mean, there's no point in me sitting here live streaming, even though what I'm doing is not very exciting. Um, there's no point in me sitting live streaming if uh, if nobody's watching. Because that kind of defeats the purpose of, I want to talk to somebody. <laughs> so let's see if we can get this. Bo bonnet's usually the bit that you notice the most in it on a car. Bonnet and the roof. Frankie's going tea time. I had my dinner, but you're an hour ahead of me, aren't you, Frankie? You're, you'll be, what, quarter past six there now? Across here in Germany. Oh, I said I was going to try and concentrate on this A panel, eh? 
let's give it a bit more in there. Right, just for just for shits and giggles, I've done the whole cutter. I'll try and go a bit of the polish as well and see what it looks like. So I'll wipe the worst of this off. Right, so that's it's had its tea cut or cut and coat. Get another one of these things. Oh, creaky chair. Right, I've got a polish to try as well. Micro finish. Oh, everything's shaking and wobbling. Apologies. So, let's see, has this got a wee cap I need to take off? No, well, this looks. It smells just like ordinary automotive polish. It's been stuck in another bottle, to be fair. The last one I did with Autoglim, and a lot of folk were like, ooh, Autoglim's rubbish. Um. But you're only doing a model car. You know, it doesn't have to be... Well, I do know that there's... Guys that do super shiny use um, Carnuba Wax, which is a real expensive, expensive polish. Uh, yeah, it's probably out of my budget. You just took some, a whole lot of pics of your models and workbench. When I upload, don't hate, just agree to... What I would say to Vampin, when you <clears throat> when you click on the photos tab in the top left of the dungeon, where it says create album, create an album, right? And didn't he just put the day's date in it? Actually put, say it's your album, you know, change that bit. And when you click create album, direct it to the folder that your photos are in, and then upload all your photos to that album. And then that lets you have uh, all your photos in one place and you can put a little description underneath each photo saying this is what I did here or this is what this is. Because um, if you just punch up a load of photos and just post them up like that, then they tend to get lost in the dungeon because a lot of folk post stuff up. So I try to get folk to make albums, and then that way other people can click on the albums and go and look, oh, there's Vamp and RC's stuff, and it's all, all together in a nice wee album. And you can do one album for each model if you've got a lot of shots or if it's just work in progresses or finished models, whatever. But yeah, feel free to use the album feature because it makes it a lot easier, uh, especially when if I ever do a live shows and featuring the the work that you guys do on the the live streams. Um, it's it's easier to sort of click on an album and go right. This is what is done. Or... A lot of interesting builds on there as well. I mean, you've got figure painters, figure figurine figure figure painters. You've got. Folk that do tanks, <clears throat> folk that do planes, shiny cars. Um, you get a few doing uh, what we call the naughty step things, but mm, yeah. I've got one. I've got one in my display cabinet. I've still got to paint it. But, yeah. I like seeing all the unusual stuff. I suppose it's inevitable at some point we'll get somebody that's a massive Gundam builder. Yeah, I said it, naughty step, five minutes. Um, that will come on posting up all the, all the Gundams. Um, yeah, they can, but I mean, it's... I think the Boom Hut's more the Gundam central of... Uh, of everywhere. I just think they look very toy-like, even when they're painted. Some of them, uh, mm, yeah. Cracking kits. I've got a Vincent one for his birthday. It's quite a, a fancy one, so he'll be having fun with that, I guess. See, that's the only thing we're using the soft cloth. On the, ins the, the inside of there is actually textured, the roof, and all the fluff sticks to it. It's nice for soft and polishing. There's a wee bit of polish on the roof. Let's give that a buff and see if that makes it. Oh, bloody hell. Who needs take 2K clear? Bloody hell. Right. If I shield the light with my hand a bit, you should see. Right? That's not 2K clear, mate. Or guys and girls. That's standard lacquer. So you don't need 2K. I'm happy with that. 
oh, I'll just have to do the whole car of that and then I'll give it a wash and see where I end up. Have I used Tamiya as model wax? No, I haven't. Uh, I find that the Tamiya stuff is um, like the cutting compounds and all that. It's a bit overpriced. Um, I mean, that, that stuff wasn't that expensive. It was only a couple of quid. Um, that was only a couple of quid. And a, a sheet of micro mesh is only a couple of quid, you know? Um, but that's just the roof, but it's like, yeah. It's obviously whitening out a bit. Because that overhead light, see if I put this, mm, I've got my camera sitting there. But if I, if I shield it for the overhead light of it, can you see that? So, Smooth can do shiny when he wants to. Yeah. Hi, John. Paul, no seen you about for a wee while, mate. How you keeping? Um, what else is in the chat there? Watching that David kid from Norway or Germany using it. So I was wondering if it was really that good. Um, Cutting compound is cutting compound, uh, basically. It's, it's abrasive suspended in a solution or a basically what's on these, but in solution form. Um, and you've got the Tamiya coarse, medium and fine compounds. Um, it's basically that stuff. Or, you know, I, I've never tried T-cut. It might be a bit coarse, but... Um, this is designed specifically for models. Uh, a one ounce bottle. It's actually from Iowa. It's an American company, Microsurface Finishing Products Incorporated, Wilton, Iowa. Uh, as I say, I got off a Hero Boy and it's only a couple of quid. So if I go through the stages of the, the different grades of paper, the mic mess, wet sand it, give it a bit of a thing with the, the abrasive, and then some polish. Again, that was a, a couple of quid off a thing with. Um, yeah, Tamiya products are fine, they're just overpriced. You put Tamiya on it and they charge you double what that is. Looking good and shiny, yeah, I'm quite liking it. Rampin's going, I'm feeling like a gnome now, wanting that shiny. I'm very impressed with how it's come out. Uh, as I say, it's the new GX paint I was trying out. This is just a bit of fun build, but it didn't have all the the daisies on it. Now, let's see if I can zoom in on the shine. If it didn't have all the daisies on it, it would have been flatter. Don't know if he's are making out that. Um, well, it's, it's pretty, it's almost mirror-like. Maybe see it better when I do that with my hand. It's almost like a mirror, and that's not 2K. That's this stuff. Mr. Color GX. So, yeah, if it wasn't for the, the raised parts of the, the daisies, that would, that would have been lovely and smooth. Uh, same people who make the decal solutions. I don't know, Vampin. I tend to use Microset and Sol. So I don't think it's it's not micro it's no micro scale industries uh, it's micro surface per finishing products incorporated and you call it micro gloss gloss um, as I say I got that for Hero Boy and I got the polish for Hero Boy as well and it's probably standard automotive polish it's been stuck in there but you know it's a couple of pound a couple of pound So yeah, I'm I'm quite impressed. It'll be it'll be good when I get it together and I can get it on the turntable and get it lit properly and get get it turning round so you can see the reflection going round it. It's not perfect. I know there's imperfections on it and I know where the imperfections are, but I mean, it's quite an awkward shape because it's got loads of ridges and bumps and is John the car guru? Oh, oh no, John's looking at my my shiny beetle. Oh no. It'll be going, I've missed a bit. You'll be telling me I've missed a bit. <laughs> so, yeah. 
a little bit of a poly shop. And then it's just to see what it looks like. And then uh, I'm actually going to give it a wash, which sounds a bit silly because I'll need to polish it again. But uh, I have some painting to do on the inside. Those custom decals, they're actually nail. Um, you know how the, when the, the ladies or gentlemen of a certain persuasion uh, go to a nail bar and they get all the fancy nail stuff done? They're nail decals, mate. They're, they're little sunflowers with smiley, trippy, acid faces on them. Um, it was a bit of fun because we did it. We did the group build of the beetle in the dungeon, and uh, a lot of folk had different takes on how to do it. And I thought I would do a hippie, really bright, vibrant yellow hippie chick type thing with with daisies on it, <laughs> just for a bit of fun. It's just an epic start with it. Um, the thing is that that you got a normal water slide decal like a cartograph. They're like microns thick. These are about three times as thick, so they do stand proud of the surface. But then if you were to, I suppose if you were to look at the natural car with these on, they would be stuck on the top, so they would be anyway. I'm not worrying about it too much. It's a bit of fun. But I fucking, it's, it's practice for me at trying to do shiny um, with the processes involved with the different, you know, layers of paint and wet sanding and cutting it back and polishing. I'm just really happy with how it's come out, so. Um, and I can finally hopefully get another build done and it'll be like yay, I finished another one that's the plan well that'll actually happen so I get manicures, no uh, I simply went onto the interwebs, onto the ebays um, and typed in nail decals and sunflowers, sunflower nail decals uh, I used three packs, and the interesting thing was they were doing a special offer at the time that with every pack of, I think there was like 10 assorted sizes, just a little pack like that size, uh, 10 assorted sizes of the sunflower with the happy faces, and I don't know, let's see if we can get zoomed in on a happy face. Can we get, see if we can get it out of the reflection and actually show you what some of these decals are. Obviously, they're going to white out a bit. See the wee faces on them? Um, so, yeah, the, these are water slides, though, and they they do work with set and soil, which was another bonus uh, when you're putting them on because I had some complex curves because I've got a couple that's going um, going around the, the join at the, the wheel arches and that. So the set and soul works on them as well. Um, yeah, so I'll just put in um, daisy decals, uh, nail 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 art decals, and yeah, they were they weren't very dear. As I say, what I actually got with them though is sheets of gold leaf, which is quite handy because um, I've got a Saturn uh, Five uh, rocket to do, and the lunar lander. Um, had gold leaf on the outside. Um, so I'm thinking that I might try some proper gold leaf on it when I go to do it, but I need to get some... There's an adhesive you get for uh, microscale that's for uh, foil adhesive. So I need to get myself some of that, and I'll be giving that a bash on my... Uh, when I go to do my Saturn V which will be a while away yet. Yeah, I think that's I think that's going to be that for polishing out. I just want to see what it looked like, see if I've got all the paint the way I wanted it to go. Are they thin decals? No, JS, they're thick. They're really, really thick. Uh, certain ways you look at it on the wing, you'll actually see it standing proud. Um, and that's had two good coats of lacquer on it. I could possibly bury them if I if I two k it and put a, a ridiculous amount of lacquer on it. I could bury them, but they're, they're thick, so they're going to stand proud. But it's a fun car anyway, so the idea is they're actually stickers that stuck onto the car. So, um, 
If you can use floor wax for clear coat. <laughs> I don't use it as a clear coat, I use it as a utility coat, but yeah, I, I take it you're talking about um, that stuff. Yeah, I I don't use it as a clear coat as such. I use it for some things, but um, I certainly don't use it as a clear coat. Uh, a new decal. <laughs> yeah, if, if you go on eBay and you're wanting a bit of laugh and you're, you're thinking, right, well, I mean, this kit was only like, what, 10 or 12 pounds? It's just a, an airfix starter kit. So it's an inexpensive kit, and you want to do something funny, and you look up the nail decals, oh, it's brilliant, you get skulls and crossbones and all sorts of things, and it's just a bit of fun. It's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. Um, I've got a little, silly little yellow beetle that's going to have trippy flowers on it, but uh, I'm really, really chuffed for that paint job, even though I see myself, so I'm getting better at them. It's not perfect. I mean, you'll know yourself when you build your own models. Um, yeah, it's real flower power. You know yourself when you're doing your own uh, models. You know where the mistakes are. You know where a bit's not quite right that you could have done a bit better. And we're all our own worst critics. It's like, oh, I wish I could have done that better. And But I tend, tend to find every model I do, I get slightly better. I pick up new techniques. I listen to other people and go, all right, okay, I'll try that. Sometimes the technique doesn't work for you. There's no harm in trying it. Um, so, right, see if we can get this. Oh, I wonder if it'll contrast against the purple better. Right, let's see if we can get a little bit of zoomage on it. That's all polished and cut up. Right, let's see if I can get any reflection on that for you guys. Just to see, can you see? See the reflection on it? What do you think? Think I'll do? For a B12 pound kit? Think that'll do for depth to shine? I think that'll pass for me. And then eventually I'll go on top of this once I get off, because I've still got a paint on the inside it, but eventually it'll go on top of here. And we'll have all the all the seats and stuff inside it, all my nice cream leather interior and all that sort of, yeah. So I think that's, yeah, I'm happy with the body work on it. As I say, I'm going to give it a wash off before I paint. I've got still got the detail to paint in the dash. And I'll do a nice uh, head cloth. There's wee bits of fluff in there, so I'll need to wash them out. And then when it's all together, I can give it a final polish. Because so I'm quite happy with that. That's a good afternoon's work. That'll do for me. So yeah, I'm hoping to do a similar, because I'm using the same paints, when I go to do, um, oh, where is it? Where's my pores? Going to be building one of these. Uh, hold on, zoom out, zoom out, Terry, zoom out, zoom out. Right, so I'm going to be building one of these. Um, I'm going to be lighting it up. So I'm going to use the same kind of paint that I used as a yellow. Um, which is a lacquer, which is Mr. Color GX, but I'm going to go for the, the Herman Red on it. And I'll use the same uh, clear coat that I used on the Beetle. So I'm hoping to get uh, a similar level of shine on that, but I'm also going to be putting, um, I'm going to make the lights work and the indicators work and, and see how I get on with that. Um, I've had a look at the kit there. Tail end's a little bit warped, but I'm sure I'll be able to sort something out with that. But I'll be doing a build video series on that, so um, I'll be doing that on my channel. But yeah, I'm really chuffed how that's come out, that little Beatles bodywork, and uh, not a hint of 2K anywhere near it. Yeah, it's it's a uh, turbo with a, is it the whale tail they call it? I keep calling it the shark tail. It's a whale tail. It's got a fat ass on it. Yeah, so that's that's micro mesh. That's what I use. Um, as I say, it's I showed it on Wednesday, but it's it's an emery cloth, a very fine emery cloth, with different grits. Right, so there's twelve thousand, eight thousand. That's what I've been using today. But when you first start off, and there's more twelve, or six thousand as well, and four thousand um, for your initial cutting backs. If you if you've got to do it a bit more. And they're only like two or three pounds a sheet. Um, 
they don't last long. I mean, I've got loads of bits there that are kind of worn out. But, um, yeah, so I do that, and then I do my liquid abrasive, and then I do my polish. And uh, you get that. So what's this? Vamping saying it looks awesome, but not a Revo, though. <laughs> that's that's their fix. <laughs> so it's uh, people slate Revel kits, but I mean it's <clears throat> it's got the shape of a Porsche. So even if it's got some fit issues, I mean we're, we are modelers after all. So if there's some fit issues, we'll overcome them. We'll adapt it. We'll get it working. We'll build it because that's what model building is about. And it might not be a perfect fit, and I might have to sand things and take bits of flash off it and all that. But that's that's what you do when you make models, isn't it? So uh, I'm going to have a cigarette, chat for a little bit, and then I think that'll be me for the day. So I'm quite glad. I actually got my, my body and my beetle done. I'm really happy with the level of shine on it. So I've, I've taken a lot of time to do that, and it's just a daft wee model. Um, it's not quite got the level of shine. As, it's got a better level of shine than my Herald. So I've definitely improved. Um need to remember this is only my second car in 35 years and the Herald was my first one in 35 years because I mean I, I only came back to the hobby two and a half years ago so that's only my second car shell since I've come back I've been building mostly motorbikes <coughs> uh, if you were tuned in on Wednesday you would have seen me um, doing all the wet sanding on the RZ parts well they're now all wet sanded back they're waiting for another coat of lacquer and then I'll go through all this process that I've done on this with that. Um, and then I can get the bike built up, which is just sitting off to the side here. And there's uh, the main bit of the bike. So that's what those bits are for. And then I don't know what I'll do at the bit. I, I need to get the eyes done and her, and then I can get the, the flesh downs. I'd like to get back onto her again. But yeah, it, I, I think these little uh, live at the bench things are um, helping me get back to the bench, which is the main thing. So, yeah, there, there's the interior, and uh, I've got a wee bit more paint to do in the wheels. Uh, but yeah, kind kind of yellow and gold, but a, a sort of light tan cream interior. There's uh, and super flower power chicks and stuff on. So, yeah, a bit of fun. So what I'll say, guys, is, yeah, I've went on a little bit longer than I thought I would, but um, thanks very much for joining in. Um, it certainly passes my day more when I've got somebody to chat to. There'll be more of these coming up, but I'm, I'm not going to schedule them. It'll just be, you know, when I'm at the bench and it's not something I'm filming from a YouTube channel, I'll, I'll just pop up, a, pop up a link and you can come in. Uh, John Paul's just posted his 66 sub Suburban so far. So, yeah, I'll get a look at the dungeon a bit later on and have a little look and see what you guys are up to. Because um, I, I do love seeing what the rest of you guys do because it gives me ideas as well. It's, you know, everybody's doing different stuff. So, uh, I think, thank you all for joining me. Uh, I'm going to end this one now. We've been on a good couple of hours. Uh, I need to go and get some something to eat for my dinner. So, thanks once again. Um, as I say, there'll probably be more of these popping up. So until the next one, take care of yourselves and happy modeling. Right, who's got the button? You got the button? See you later. <laughs>